travel near, travel farther, wherever you are, the sign of good coffee you'll see. On the white humming highways, the unbeaten byways, and down by the deep briny sea. Down the streets they call Maine, or the country is plain, the sign of good coffee that stop. Have a cup, baby, too, of that wonderful brew that's good to the very last stop. Maxwell House Coffee presents Mama, the award-winning television drama starring Peggy Wood. I remember San Francisco and the house where I was born. I remember these pictures and those times more clearly than the things that happened to me yesterday. And I remember my family as we were then. My little sister Dagmar, my big brother Nell, and of course, Papa. But most of all, when I think back to those days so long ago, most of all, I remember Mama. Yes, here's Mama. Brought to you by Maxwell House Coffee, the coffee with the most famous flavor in the world. Today, when every cup of coffee has to be good, make sure you get the one coffee you know is good to the last drop. Wonderful Maxwell House Coffee. There's no substitute for a truly good cup of coffee. That's why folks insist on Maxwell House coffee, because they know there's a rich reward of flavor in every steaming cup. For Maxwell House is made from selected prime flavor coffees, the richer, better tasting coffees that are the heart of a truly fine blend. Some brands of coffee contain only small amounts of these richer coffees, some none at all. But Maxwell House is made first and foremost of prime flavor coffees. So is it any wonder that today, as over the years, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House coffee than any other brand? Next time you shop for coffee, keep this in mind. Today, when every cup of coffee has to be good, make sure you get the one coffee you know is good to the last drop. Roaster fresh, vacuum packed, Maxwell House coffee. company. Nels is Lady Love. Which one? The one, Nancy Stevens. Yeah, Nancy Stevens. And after supper, we must let Nels and Nancy have the parlor to themselves. Nels wants to tell her a lot of big news about this summer. Oh, what about our summer, Papa? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to get time off from the exposition, I'll have to ask pretty soon. But Mr. Yankins will let me know tomorrow and I can have my two weeks off. Oh, if we're going to go up to the farm, we'd better write to Uncle Chris. He'll want to know when we're coming, how many there'll be, how long we're going to stay. Oh, that's right. Mama, we don't want him to get mad and uninvite us the way he did one summer. <laughs> Tomorrow night I will write him. Oh, hello, T.R. Hello, T.R. Uh, I'm getting my a couple of lies. Oh, sure. Uh, Captain, you get it for him. Aunt Johnny said she wouldn't be caught dead in the same house as Uncle Chris, but I could go alone with this to let me. Oh, sure, you can come with us, T.R. <laughs> You can teach me how to ride that old black horse. Sure I uh, will, but I won't be there. <laughs> now, change your mind and come with us. Not a chance, old man. But maybe I'll see you on the weekends. I won't be far away. I wish I could come with you. So do I, T.R., but those places cost a lot of money. But you're going. Oh, but I'm going to work. Of course, it won't be your work. I'll get a little time in for swimming and tennis and side trips. Oh, that must be Nancy. Yeah, I'll get it. Oh, and listen, everybody, don't say anything to Nancy about my new job. I want to surprise her, okay? <laughs> promise? Of course, why? Come on, now, promise. I wish I could go with Nels. Oh, you'll have a much better time with us, T.R., and I will teach you to ride that black horse. I bet Nels has a wonderful time. Some people just have all the luck, don't they? I want this summer to count for something, Nels. I mean, well, to be an inspiration, a guide to young children. Well, that's certainly better than wasting your time at some silly resort. Don't you think so, Nell? Oh, yes. Yes, I do, Nancy. Oh, and of course, it's so beautiful up there. The mountains and the lake and the woods. Heavenly. Heavenly. I almost feel as though I should be paying them instead of my taking money for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nell? Hmm? I'm going to be gone eight weeks. You going to miss me? No. Well, Nell, I don't think that's very nice. No, I'm not going to miss you. What is the name of the camp that you're going to, Nancy? You know the name of it, Camp Nokomis. Mm-hmm. And uh, where is Camp Nokomis? It's on Canyon Lake, I told you. That's right. And what's right next to Camp Nokomis? Nothing. 
Well, I mean, well, there's a boys' camp on the same side of the lake. Exactly. And what's the name of this boys' camp? Well, how should I know? It's time I started home. Isn't it called Camp Catawampus? I suppose so, but what... Catawampus, an old Indian word meaning I will serve. Nels, what are and you... And that's where I'm going to be for the summer, at Camp Catawampus. Nels! Sure, you didn't think I'd let you out of my sight for eight whole weeks, did you? <laughs> Why, Nels, how, how absolutely scrumptious. Well, how did you happen to go there? I didn't this know... This fellow who's in my class, he got a job uh -huh. there, and he introduced me to this Mr. Crossman. He kind of runs the place. And he gave me the job, just like that. Oh, <laughs> Nels, we're going to have the most wonderful time. We can go swimming and picnicking, and we might even make a tennis court. Mm -hmm, that's right. And you know, there are two marvelous summer hotels just across the lake. So all we have to do is get in a canoe and row across to go to all the dances. And row back at night in the moonlight? <gasps> oh, Nels, it's the most wonderful thing I ever heard of. <laughs> it's, you know, it's fate. No, no, it's Canyon Lake. And do you know what I'm going to do when I get there? I'm going to go right to the shore and extend my personal thanks. I'm going to kneel down on the shore, just like this, and give the shore a great big kiss, just like no. this. Oh, now, it's just Camp Catawampus saluting Camp Nokomis. Now, now, Mrs. Bullock, I'm afraid it'll be quite impossible to provide special food for your son. I'm sure he'll be perfectly all right on our regular menu. Why don't you let him try it, just, just for a week? Splendid, Mrs. Bullock. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, yes, Winston, what is it? That new boy in the tent, the one who came in last night. Oh, it will, yes. What about him? Well, I think he's having a fit or something. Uh, a fit? Well, he was kind of choking and turning purple, so I threw some cold water in his well, face. Well, uh, how is he? Okay. Oh, good. Good, Winston. Now you run along and make Howard feel right at home. All right, Mr. Crossman. I'll make him feel at home all uh, right. Oh. oh, boy, this is a wonderful place you got here, Mr. Crossman. Yeah, well, I thought you'd like it, Nels. <laughs> I don't think of it as my place. It's our place. It belongs to each and every one of us. A team, Hanson. That's what we are, a team. Well, yes, that's right. Now, that's our me. regular activities don't start until tomorrow, so we'll consider today just sort of get acquainted day. Relax, do anything you want. Oh, that's fine. There's a friend that I'd like to go over and see. A friend? Yes, uh, a girl. She's uh, one of the uh, counselors at Camp Nokomis. Camp Nokomis? Oh, no, Hanson. I'm sorry, absolutely not Hanson. Oh, but Mr. Cross... Oh, no, Hanson. You see, Miss Lauderback, she's the head of Camp Nokomis, and I have an agreement. Absolutely no visiting back and forth. But absolutely necessary, Hanson. Boys, you know, and, uh, <laughs> girl. Oh. Oh, but this is a girl I know from home. Now... I think you're going to find you'll be much too busy to be worrying your head about girls and such like. You know, getting acquainted, getting your thing settled. And that's just what you should be doing right now, Hanson. Come along, I'll show you to your quarters. Tent 13. is your new senior brother, Mr. Hanson. Hanson, this is Winston, and Elwood, and Bruce, uh, uh, Howard. Howard, what's the matter? I want to go home. Well, yeah. now, lots of us fellows feel that way at first, but we don't let it worry us. No, sir. After a few days, we'll all be so busy, we won't even have time to think about home. No, sir. Now, we're all going to be great pals, aren't we? And we're going to make this the best tent in the whole camp, aren't we? Even if it is 10, 15. <laughs> Remember then, lunch at 12 o'clock. Did you bring anything to eat, Mr. Hanson? Eat? Sure, any cake or candy or anything. Oh, well, yeah, I think I have something in the suitcase. But look, this is hardly the time. <laughs> Why not? How old are you, Mr. Hanson? How old am, how old am I? What a business is that of yours? What I mean is, do you know anything about life? Or are you just like the usual immature type who work in summer camps? All right, now, that's enough of that. Mr. Hanson? Uh, yes, son, uh, what is it? Will you please help me fix this camera? Why, certainly. But <laughs> you've got it in quite a mess here. You'll never fix that old thing. Why don't you 
have to find me to send you a new one. I like this one. Oh, hey, kid, take it easy now. Don't cry. Take it easy. Listen, uh, fellas, how about a little action? Uh, what do you say we play uh, a game or something? How about that? Would you like to do that? We don't have to do anything. This is Get Acquainted Day. Oh, oh, well, I'm sorry. It was just a suggestion. Well, in that case, we could uh, just sit down here and get acquainted. <laughs> now then, here are the week's activities. Well, I mean to say, special events in addition to our daily schedule. Uh, Monday, archery practice and tournament. Tuesday, sunrise hike to Indian Gorge. That means up at 4 a.m. and breakfast cooked out of doors, Indian style. Ah. Wednesday, wood lore and botany. And in the afternoon, first aid battle. Thursday and Friday, water sports. That's swimming and diving. Saturday, all day hike to Wellington Notch and back. And Sunday, special Bible class. That's all, men. You can spend the rest of the time any way you like. <laughs> It's you, Howard. What do you want? There's no more wood in the court, and I'm thirsty. Oh, for Pete's sake. Here, see if there's some left in the canteen. Go to bed. Ah! Mr. Hanson, Mr. Hanson! What is it? I think there's a snake in my bed. A snake? It is just a rope. What's the matter with me? Oh! Will you please go back to bed, all of you? Don't you ever sleep? Everybody up! Everybody up! What is it? Four o'clock. Time for our sunrise hike to Indian Gold. Wonderful men. Everybody up. canoe rides on the river. Couldn't ask for anything better. Oh, and by the way, don't think it would be such a good idea for you to stop by on your way to Uncle Chris's place. I might be too busy. Love to all now. Yeah, looks like he's having a fine time, yeah? Yeah, looks like. Well, if he's having such a wonderful time and everything's so perfect, why doesn't he want us to come up and visit him? Just answer me that. Oh. Nancy. You're late. I know, but this is my day in the kitchen. Oh, well, I don't have but a minute. Elsie's sick today, and I have to do nature study. Well, did you ask Miss Lauderback about Saturday afternoon? Oh, yes. Yes, she says I could get off, provided Elsie's well by then, and I'm sure she will be. Oh, boy, that's good, because we haven't had much luck on getting together. I know. But I couldn't help it about last Saturday. Now, two of the girls in my tent were absolutely covered with poison oak. Yes, I know. I have it on both ankles. Mm. Well, I've avoided it so far. Oh, but, of course, really, I don't care. I mean, oh, actually, I'm just having a marvelous time. Mm. So am I. Oh, excuse me, Nancy. Oh, me too. I never get enough sleep. How is the food in your place? Well, actually, it's uh, not very good. Mm. Ours is terrible, too. Oh, I'm getting so tired of prunes and stew and bread pudding. Oh, no. Mm. Wouldn't it be just wonderful if we could get over to one of those hotels and have lunch? Say, that's a wonderful idea. We... Oh, darn it. Listen, I have to go now, Nancy. That's the afternoon period. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Nancy. Something instructive, stimulating. All right. Remember, handsome, a wasted hour is a lost hour. Uh, that's all, men. All right, all right. Break it up, break it up. We're supposed to play a game, Mr. Hanson. Oh, 
All right, and that's just what we're going to do. We're going to play a game. Now we have to think of a game. Uh, oh, ha, ha, I know a very good game. You're going to like this. It's the word game. Now, uh, we have to think of a letter, and then uh, you have to name all the words you can think of beginning with that letter. Now, we'll start here. Oh, well, now think of a letter. I don't want to. Come on, think of a letter. All right, you don't want to think of a letter. Then I'll think of a letter. Now, I'm thinking of a letter T. Now, you have to name all the words you can think of beginning with T. We'll start with uh, Elwood. Tomatoes, taffy, turkey, toffee, toast, turnips, tripe, tuna fish, turtle soup, tutti frutti ice cream. I'm hungry, all right. Mr. Hanson. All right, all right. That's very good. That was 10 for Elwood. Now, we're going to go to Winston. Winston? Oh, uh, Hanson, I'd like you to take charge. You should be through in plenty of time for the ball game and a swim before supper. Carry on, then. All right, fellas. Relay races. <laughs> Beginning to look as if I'm never going to get away any weekend. So maybe you can stop over on your way to Uncle Chris's. There's no place for you to spend the night here, but there's a pretty good hotel in the village. Well, so now he would like us to come. Ah, here is a letter that begins to make some sense. Sure. Uh, all right now, fellas. Now there are a few things that we must remember today. Now, what are some of them, Bruce? Not to go out beyond the rail. Very good, Bruce. Winston? Not to pinch Howard while we're in the deep water. Uh -huh. Wait till we get to shore. Uh -huh. Howard? Not to holler for help unless I'm really in trouble. Very good, Howard. Elwood? Not to eat in the water. That's right. All right, now. Everybody stands, everybody understands everybody else. Everything is nice and reasonable. And everybody loves everybody else. Right? Right. Because this afternoon is my day off, and I want to get this swim over double quick. Savvy? Oh, uh, Hampton, uh, you can send your men along with tent number 12 today. You can omit the swim. Oh. Oh, that's, that's fine. All right, boys. Run over to tent number 12. Come on. Off with you. And don't give the man over there any trouble. Ah, uh, Hanson, I uh, know this is your afternoon off, but I now wonder look, if... Now, look, Mr. Crossman, I have other plans. I have to meet someone. Yes, I know, Hanson, but the little Miller boy has a toothache. He'll have to be driven in to the dentist. Can't you get someone else? Uh, you're the only one I can trust with the Ford, Hanson. I'm afraid this is an emergency. Look, Mr. Crossman, I... I... I can't. Now, look, Hanson, uh, I'm sure that this is your afternoon off and that you uh, want to go along, but after all, you're the only one I can trust with the automobile... And if it's that little girl over at Miss Louderbacks, you can send her a message. You can use the telephone in my cabin. All but right. Hanson, surely you don't put your social engagements in front of a, a little child in pain? All right, Mr. Crossman, I'll do it. But first, I'm going to make a telephone call. Uh, Hanson. Hanson, we have a very important rule here at Camp Catawampus, one I feel you should know about. And that rule is this. But if anyone doesn't fit into the scheme of things, he's perfectly at liberty to leave any time he cares to. No one is indispensable, Hanson. I always have to wait for you. I'm sorry, Nancy, but I, I couldn't just walk out in the middle of supper. Ooh, what's the matter with your arms? Poison oak, that's what's the matter. My wrists are driving me absolutely crazy, and I've got it all over my hands, too. Ugh, I'm sorry, Nancy. Did you get my message? Yes. I'm sorry about last night, too. Just one more time. What difference does that make when we haven't been able to do a single one of the things we planned? Boat rides, dances. That's right. Well, I wouldn't have any fun going anywhere with this awful poison oak anyway. And do I get any sympathy from Miss Lauterbach? I do not. Mr. Crossman has a remedy for poison oak I and it's quite I don't care. I wish I'd never seen this place. I wish I could go home. Really, Nancy? Yes. 
Yes, Nels, I do, I do. Well, it isn't at all the way I thought it would be. Nothing but run, 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 run every minute. And uh, I have something to tell you, Nels. And this afternoon, I... I told Miss Lauterbach I wanted to go home. Nancy, you didn't. Yes, I did. I must say she didn't mind in the least. I told her that my hay fever was bothering me, and, and it is, Nels, really. It's really much worse. Yes, yes, it must be with all this grass and yes. trees. But, but when? Sometime Monday. I'm sorry, Nels. Nancy, do you know what Mr. Crossman said to me? No. He said that if I didn't like it here, I could leave whenever I wanted to. He did? Oh, oh, well, then it's all right for both of us. You think so? I certainly do. Well, I don't see why we should ruin our whole summer just because we came to the wrong places. I don't either. Especially when they obviously don't care whether we go or stay. That's right. I'm going to have a talk with old Crossman tomorrow. All right. And then we'll meet right here after breakfast Monday morning because then we'll know what we're going to do. Monday morning it is. And I'm glad we made up our minds. Oh, Nell, so am I. <laughs> Goodbye. Haven't you given up on that camera? You'll never get that thing fixed. Can I help you, Miss Anson? No, thanks. I think I can manage by myself. Say, isn't this visitor's day? Why, what are you doing up here? I don't have any visitors. Oh, well, me neither. But what about your family? Oh, they'd like to come up, Miss Tanson, but they work on a real tight budget. You see, I've got four brothers and sisters. Is that so? I didn't think I'd have a chance to be here this summer, but Mr. Crossman fixed it up with Pop. Pop says Mr. Crossman's a real nice man. He is? Pop says Mr. Crossman will be lucky if he gets through this summer. He keeps taking too many boys who can't pay the whole price. He does? Sure, like me. And there's lots of others, too. There are? Sure. Some kids don't hardly pay at all. If a kid wants to come here bad enough, he can. And Mr. Crossman says never mind about the money. You don't say. Pop says Mr. Crossman's a terrible businessman. He said it didn't make any difference since he's such a nice man. Hmm. So there's lots of kids up here that don't have to pay anything at all, huh? Well, this will be a wonderful surprise for Nels. He wasn't expecting you, was he? No, he did not write No, we changed our mind and came up sooner. <laughs> ah. Well, it's very fortunate that you came this weekend because I'm afraid Nels has decided to leave us. To leave? Yes, it happens that way sometimes. A fellow just doesn't seem to fit in somehow, and when that's the case, I think the best thing to do is throw in the cards and declare a new deal all around. Well, I'll tell him that you're here. Well, maybe now Nels will go on up with us to Uncle Casey's. Mm, maybe. Oh, nay. Well, we do not know what happened. Oh, oh Mama, why didn't you uh, tell me? We did not know. Uh, we were on our way up to Uncle Chris's. Yeah. Captain the Dagmar T.R. have been up already. Yeah, so now you can go with us. Oh, me? Yeah, the, the gentleman said that you were not staying here. Yeah, that's, that's right, Mama. Yeah, but then you can come along with us. Well, yes, I could, but... No, you cannot walk out on a yard like this. Well, I've already made up my mind, Papa. Oh, but then all right. And you could come with us. To, we can get a train this afternoon in one hour. No, I couldn't leave now, Mama. I told Nancy I'd see her in the morning. Oh, but then you could come in tomorrow. Well, I guess I could stay a little longer. Give Mr. Crossman a chance to decide what he wants to do. Oh, oh no, I do not think so. If you have made up your mind to go, then, then I think you should go right now, right away. Martha, this is our son, and he is walking out on a job he said he would do all summer. So, if he cannot do it, there's only one thing left. Walk out. As usual, I have to wait for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy. <laughs> I'm only joking now. Lovely day, isn't it? Yes. There's not so much uh, uh, humidity. Mm -hmm. Nancy. Nell. 
Look, there's something I've got to tell you. I have to tell you something, Nell. Nancy. Nell. Nancy, I, I, I've decided to stay. I know, I said we shouldn't be here and all that, but, well, I did tell Mr. Corsman I'd stay for the whole summer, and, well, I'm going to stay. Oh, I'm so glad you said that, Nell, because, well, it makes it so much easier for me to tell you what I was going to tell you. I'm going to stay, too. Nancy, you are. I didn't know how I was going to tell you, but I... Oh, I couldn't walk out on Miss Lauterbach that way. No, I guess you couldn't. After all, we can't fall down on our contracts now. No, no, we can't. We just mustn't think about ourselves. Remember, we contracted to do something more, to be an inspiration, a guide to the young. Of course, there's no reason why we couldn't think of ourselves just for a little while. That's just Camp Nakoma saluting Camp Catawampus. <laughs> and that's how Nell served dear old Camp Catawampus. <laughs> After it was all over, Mr. Crossman invited Mama and Papa to stay for a picnic around the outdoor fireplace. Papa and Nell's roasted the wieners. Mr. Crossman brewed the coffee. And Mama, for a change, just sat and watched the men folks do the work. <laughs> Say, does anything smell better than fresh coffee brewed outdoors over an open fire? And when it's good to the last drop, Maxwell House is sweet in the air, folks are sure of a rich reward of flavor in every steaming cup. For the world-famous flavor of Maxwell House coffee is in the blend right from the beginning because it's made from better-tasting prime flavor coffees, the richer coffees that make the difference between a cup that tastes just so-so and coffee that really satisfies. And folks everywhere know there's a difference. Your devotion to that famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor has made Maxwell House the largest-selling brand of coffee in the world. Mama and her family, like so many other families, are taking a summer vacation. But they'll be back with us in September. Goodbye. We will see you in the fall. Papa, Nelson, Catherine, and Dagmar, and me, Mama. Have a good summer, and may the Lord keep you happy and strong. And while the Hansons are away, be sure to watch the Hollywood stars on Mike Stokey's Pantomime Quiz, beginning next week at this same time on most of these stations, brought to you by Baker's Instant 4-in-1 Mix. And here is Mike Stokey to tell you all about it. That's right, folks. Next week it is Pantomime Quiz, and let's remind you how to play it. Here's lovely Dorothy Hart. Dorothy, show quick. Huh? All right, Go right. ahead. All right, you're mixing something, putting it in an oven, pulling it out, you're baking. Uh, baker, bakers, uh, fast, hurry, instant. Bakers, instant, four-in-one mix, our sponsor. See you next week on Pantomime Quiz, ladies and gentlemen. And wherever you are this summer, remember to buy Roaster Fresh vacuum-packed Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> In summertime, at dessert time, try Jell-O Instant Pudding, the perfect dessert for hot, busy days. All you do is just add them to milk and beat them up. That's it. Almost at once, Jell-O Instant Puddings are ready to eat. So creamy, so cool, so delicious, so quick and easy, even children can make them in just the wink of an eye. Stock up with a terrific new busy day dessert, new Jell-O Instant Pudding. Next week, be sure to see Pantomime Quiz, starring Mike Stokey. Mama was presented this week by Maxwell House Coffee. This is Alan Williams speaking. <laughs>